For years I've been trying to help people with learning disabilities. I'm president of Dyslexia Scotland and they do a great job. But what are we doing? We're trying to raise money all the time to try and help a parent, for example, who has a dyslexic child. Maybe you'll find out that there is a thing called Dyslexia Scotland and we're trying to build some advertising up to do that more profoundly in the future. But at the moment, it's like a well-kept secret and nobody is given that help unilaterally. I was speaking at a function in the Dorchester Hotel in partly in London, um, I think it was the end of 2003 or maybe 2004, maybe. And I'll never forget, I'm here I'm surrounded by, you know, the Dorchester's a pretty flash hotel, one of the hotels in the world, really. And maybe 300 people there, and I've been invited there to get an award for what I'd done for learning disabilities. And I'm doing my acceptance speech, and I suddenly stopped in the middle of it, and I said, I think I'm in the wrong place. Because look at you. You're all super rich. You've all paid a lot of money for this, and you're going to raise money tonight, and you're going to give it to people with learning disabilities to help them. But this is not the way it should be happening. Because there's never enough money to do that correctly, and is it being spent in the right way all of the time? And it suddenly came to me, teacher training. Now, nobody's thought about it properly until then. I'm not claiming that I was the exclusive on it, but for me, suddenly the awareness of why am I bothering to go to the Dorchester to speak to a lot of rich folk? Because it was Blair that said, education, 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 when he, the Labour Party came into power. And it was also Blair and his government that said there had to be social inclusion. Now, me speaking to a lot of rich folk in the Dorchester Hotel was not social inclusion. Now, I'm rich today, but I, I mean, I didn't have any money. I had no money at all, and really no money. And I just think it's a disaster for people who don't have the wherewithal to be able to help their children and don't know where to go to get that help. And you know what? It is not though, it's, it's the responsibility of government and it's therefore the responsibility of the de departments of education in the government. This isn't a private sector problem of trying to get private sector money to help on this. I tell everybody that our taxpayers, I mean, I, I live in Switzerland and I live in the UK, but I pay a lot of money in taxes every year in the UK, a lot of money. And I don't mind that because I like the privilege of living part of my life in the UK. Every taxpayer thinks that he or she nowadays should expect health care through the national health system service if they've had an accident or they've got an illness. That's perfectly acceptable since everybody's been paying taxes, right? I think the taxpayer expects the police force to keep law and order in our country. That's the taxpayer's money that's paying for that. And likewise, every person should expect a proper education. Because again, the taxpayer has paid for that educational system which this year in the United Kingdom, or rather in England alone, will be £82 billion. Pounds. And the teachers aren't being taught how to deal with 10% of the whole country. So there's something to be done. I'm on the board, an advisory board for the Scottish Parliament, and I can't read and write correctly. But, you know, I know how to get things done. And in Jack's case, I phoned him up and said, Jack, I need to come and see you. I'm going to bring Duncan Rice with me, who's the Vice-Chancellor and the Principal of the Aberdeen University. I said, I want to come talk to you about learning problems. So he said he me, had me in there, had an hour and a half with him. Good example of Scottish Parliament versus Westminster. At the end of it, I said, listen, Jack, I've been through a tough time. I've been trying to keep the British Grand Prix in this country, and I've been dealing with Westminster, and I'm up to here with it. And I can't take it anymore. 
I said, I've got to know, yes or no, do you want to do this or do you not want to do it? I just want a simple answer. He said, how much time are you going to give me? I said, one month. And I told him how much I wanted. I wanted £1.5 million. Pounds. He says, okay, I'll let you know in a month. And a month to the day, I got a letter saying, Jackie, we'll go ahead with it. Phew. In governmental terms, you would never get that in Westminster. So I got the 1.4 million, you know. <laughs> the 100,000 we can handle. <laughs> but it's there and it's done. Now we need to do it across the country and with the new systems that are being put in because no doubt Murray House will have something that Aberdeen can benefit from and, and so forth and there'll be interchange. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of, this is how we do it here and we don't care what you're doing over there, we're going to do it our way. There's a lot of that still going on, 